reporting, quote, the House January 6th committee is scrutinizing former President Trump's involvement in proposals to seize voting machines after the 2020 election, including efforts to create a legal basis for directing national security agencies to take such an extreme action. And as we reported on this broadcast yesterday, The New York Times lays out the multi-pronged effort by Trump and his allies to get just one federal agency to bite and to join the ex-president's crusade to overturn the election result by seizing voting machines. Trump reportedly tried to get DOJ to seize the voting machines, only to be rejected by his AG Bill Barr. So then he entertained a plan for the Defense Department to do it, only to get pushed back from White House counsel and, lo and behold, his own lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. So then Giuliani was asked if he could look into whether DHS could seize the voting machines. To this, Giuliani said, sure, he tried, but then he too was rebuffed by acting Deputy DHS Secretary Ken Cuccinelli. And now, reporting on another attempt by Trump to get one of those officials to agree to his plan. New York Times reporting this, quote, Cuccinelli, who had told Giuliani that the Homeland Security Department did not have the authority to audit or impound the machines, later encountered Trump at a meeting on a different topic, Trump again raised with him, in passing, the idea of the department seizing the machines, and Cuccinelli reiterated that there was no legal authority for doing so, it's according to a person familiar with the exchange. And all of it, the whole plan, was, of course, pinned on the hope that a Trump official would come through with a bombshell. From the Times reporting, Phil Waldron, a retired Army colonel who was an ally of Mr. Flynn and Ms. Powell, revealed in a podcast interview last year that the gambit initially hinged on a report about foreign interference in the election, that John Ratcliffe, the director of national intelligence at the time, was bound by a congressional mandate to present to lawmakers by December 18th, 2020. If Ratcliffe had pointed a finger at China, accusing Communist Party officials of manipulating votes in the U.S., Mr. Waldron said in the interview, Trump would have been within his rights to invoke rare and extraordinary powers reserved for a president in times of national emergency. That report on foreign interference wasn't actually released until March of 2021. The very first finding in that report reads, quote, we have no indication that any foreign actor attempted to alter any technical aspect of the voting process in the 2020 U.S. election, including voter registration, casting ballots, vote tabulation, or reporting results. The January 6th Select Committee investigating the scheme to seize voting machines is where we start this hour. Luke Broadwater is back, New York Times congressional correspondent, byline on all that great reporting we read from today and all week. Carol Lennox here, Washington Post national investigative reporter, also an MSNBC contributor who's written about a lot of the events in question and under the microscope today. And Michael Seals here, former RNC chairman, now an MSNBC political analyst. Um, Luke, I want to start with you in the reporting, and I want to ask you to piece together the significance of what Ratcliffe offered Waldron and how Trump sought to seize that to operationalize the voting machine seizure by his national security agencies. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Nicole. Um, so as the allies of Donald Trump and Donald Trump himself are trying to overturn the 2020 election. They need to have a veneer of legality to these efforts. They can't just come in and seize voting machines for no reason. They can't demand Mike Pence throw out legitimate votes uh, and accept Trump electors instead with, for no reason. So they need some sort of veneer of, of a reason. And Bill Waldron down in Texas comes up with this idea that uh, it is China's manipulation of the American voting system that they're going to <laughs> hope happened or believe happened, right? And so he believes that Ratcliffe will, uh, will put forward a report that will find this. The problem is, one, Ratcliffe doesn't put forward a report before January 6th. And two, when he does, it finds no such thing. It says there was no, China wasn't flipping votes. They didn't seize control of machines. They didn't take any of these actions that, the Trump allies believe they would take. But because this stuff hasn't been shot down in the minds of Waldron, in the minds of uh, President Trump and others, they continue on with these plans and this effort to act like this stuff is real 
and therefore they can take these extreme measures to try to keep Donald Trump in power, including exploring whether any one of three different uh, federal agencies would be willing to seize voting machines in six states. So, yes, really extreme stuff, and everything we learn about it each day uh, makes the plot look even more, um, more threatening to democracy. You know, I mean, Michael Steele, what's so extraordinary about these two pieces of reporting this week um, that Lucas bylined on is they are both Trump-directed plots. And the through line is, is Trump, and it's only Trump. There is no other through line. We'll, we'll explain. I'm going to ask Luke to explain to folks who Waldron is. He plugs into Flynn allegedly through DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, which is... Um, uh, an agency in which they both served, I believe, uh, during the Obama administration. But the only through line between all these, you know, kooks, cranks, has-beens, and you, know, you want to remember how bad Flynn was. He wasn't just someone who, who confessed to the lies he told to the FBI. He's someone who Chris Christie warned Donald Trump not to bring into the West Wing in 2016. How bad was Mike Flynn? He was so bad that Chris Christie said, don't let him near the Oval. Talk about what we're learning about what Trump sought to do and the people he sought to do it with after losing. Well, you know, just just hats off to to Luke and his in his reporting and coverage here because it is it is a gnarly story uh, to unravel in many respects, and it takes the kind of dogged work to sort of connect these dots in a way that uh, stand the scrutiny that will come from those on the right who will you know just sort of ah, oh, it's the New York Times or Washington Post is some you know left wing reporter. The facts are the facts, and here's the rub to your point, Nicole, which I think people fundamentally fundamentally need to understand because you're beginning to see it unfold through stories that are presented to you by writers like Luke. Trump controls all of this. There are two, there are two elements of this relationship. One, those who control and those who want to be controlled, who allow it to happen. The Mike Flynn's of the world and others, they want to be in that orbit. They agree with this, this, this ideology of, of authoritarianism. Um, and Trump is the avatar of that. He He's the one who they see as the best ab available to control that scenario. Trump wants to control that scenario. Nothing happens in his gambit, in his orbit, unless he wants it to happen. This is not... This is not confusing nor unclear. Donald Trump has his finger on the pulse of everything. So if if he's presented with an idea that furthers that goal and that objective to uh, turn overturn the results of of twenty of the twenty twenty election, he will surround himself with the individuals who will help get that done, and he will rely on those individuals to fulfill that particular mission. And you, whether that takes means taking someone out of a job and putting someone else in that job, even though your administration is done, you've lost the election, that's what you're going to do. And so I think the narrative is going to be further exposed here that how much, how much of this was actually directed, not, not just kind of a on the fly, oh, gee, what do you think we should do, but orchestrated, planned out, thought through. Um, and actually direct it, in, in not just by the dominions, but with Trump's finger on that particular lever uh, to achieve that outcome. And I don't think we can fool ourselves any longer into believing that that thing that we see in front of us isn't the thing that we see. Our president of the United States orchestrated the overthrow, the overturn of the results of an election in which he had lost to further his ambition and aim to seize onto and hold power. That's it. Call the thing what it is, America, and then you'll begin to understand and appreciate these stories that Luke and others are putting in front of us. They're not made up narratives. This is facts based on documents. These people are so brazen, they talked about it. They wrote it in emails. They put it in text messages because they believed they could, that A, they'd be successful, and even if they weren't Nicole, they wouldn't be touched.